Hello friends, today we are going to discuss about telemedicine's triage, also called as teletriage. I am Dr. Suresh Padadmat, Professor of Psychiatry, Head of Telemedicine Center, Head of Forensic Psychiatry Unit at Nimans, Bangalore. This presentation is based on Telemedicine Practice Guideline, which was released on 25th March 2020 by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Board of Governors in partnership with Niti Aayog. Although this guideline is a part of Appendix 5 of the Indian Medical Council, Professional Contacts, Etiquette, Ethics Regulation 2002, it is also a valid document legally under National Medical Commission Act of 2019. Before I start my presentation, I would like to have a disclaimer. This presentation is for academic and training purposes only. If you want to have a legal opinion, please do contact an advocate. Conflict of interest? None. We also request you kindly go through the original telemedicine practice guideline and also visit National Medical Commission's website for any amendments or any changes in this guideline. With this, let's understand what is teletriage. Before we move to teletriage, what is triage? Triage is a process of quickly examining a patient in order to decide which one are the most serious and must be dealt on priority basis. So, in an emergency situation, which patients should be given priority is called as triage. But however, what is teletriage? Teletriage is a process of using technology in categorizing the patient who needs urgent in-person consultation. So now, one important aspect of teletriage is presence of an healthcare worker on the patient side, that is on the spoke side, not on the hub side, plays a very important role. However, on the hub side, there will be an RMP. So RMP to a healthcare worker who is going to examine the patient and give information to the RMP. On that basis, the doctor or the RMP on the side of the hub side can take a decision for teletriaging. Please do remember, as per telemedicine practice guideline, in any case of emergency situation, in-person consultation is must. So please do refer them for the nearest health establishment. How to do telemedicine consultation between an RMP and a healthcare worker on patient side? A healthcare worker can initiate a telemedicine consultation with the RMP. Let's understand who are healthcare workers. Healthcare workers means nurse, allied health professionals, mid-level health practitioner, AM, or any other health worker designated by the appropriate authority. So, these are the people who are working in the community. So, health healthcare worker will initiate the telemedicine consultation along with the patient, with the RMP. What are those situations? The healthcare worker can initiate this telemedicine consultation from a health camp or from a home visit, from an ambulance. We call it as mobile medical units or any community-based community settings. It may be from an uh, orphanage, even it may be from any other non-hospital settings. So, healthcare worker who is in the community will initiate. Before they initiate the telemedicine consultation, the healthcare, has to, healthcare worker has certain responsibility, such as they should verify the ID of the patient and they have to introduce himself to the patient should have examined the patient personally and also explicit consent should be taken from the patient and also should explain the benefit and limitation of telemedicine to the patient. Once it is done, they will initiate the telemedicine consultation with the RMP. The RMP when he comes online should verify the ID of the patient, he has to introduce himself to the patient, should explain his registration number, speciality and also check for the explicit consent. Now the RMP will ask information from the healthcare worker and depending upon the information available, he either can ask for investigation, can ask the healthcare worker to do some general physical examination or else he can call for in-person consultation. Now the RMP, once he is satisfied with the available information and he is able to arrive at a diagnosis, at least a provisional diagnosis, he can take following decision. Either he can give health education, counselling, and prescribing medicine depending upon the type of consult. It may be first consult or a telefollow-up consult. In this kind of teletriage, injection can be prescribed directly to the healthcare worker. The healthcare worker can give these injections. And at the same time, the documentation is very essential. But the role of healthcare worker is very, very specific. If it is an emergency situation, once the RMP has told for the in-person consultation, now the healthcare worker should advise first aid, and if possible, if he knows, he has to do first aid, counselling and facilitate the referral. At the same time, health education and counselling should be emphasised what the RMP had told, providing medicine or what we call it as distributing medicine 
administering injection as per the RMP's advice and the follow-up appointments to be given. How to do telemedicine consultation between an RMP and a specialist? Here, the RMP wants an opinion from a specialist. So, RMP will initiate the telemedicine consultation. If the patient is involved, definitely an explicit consent is required. If the patient is not involved and the RMP wants to keep it anonymous, consent may not be necessary. But if the patient is involved, patient's name is taken, please do take explicit consent. Please, and also remember, RMP asking for another RMP or a specialist opinion, we, he will be considered as a treating RMP and shall be responsible for treatment and other recommendation given by the given to the patient. So, the treating RMP will be responsible for the patient. Let's take a third scenario. How to do telemedicine consultation between a patient and an RMP through a caregiver? Telemedicine practice guidelines allows caregiver to initiate the telemedicine consultation. So, who is a caregiver? Caregiver could be a family member or any person authorized by the patient to represent him. So, there are various possible scenarios. Let's take that each scenario. The caregiver has initiated the telemedicine consultation. There are two possible scenarios. Patient is present with the caregiver during the telemedicine consultation. And the another scenario is patient is absent. Now, look into the telemedicine uh, consultation with the caregiver and patient is present. Again, there are two possible scenarios. The patient is a child below 16 years. Go ahead with the telemedicine consultation. The caregiver consent will be considered as the consent and a valid, legally valid consent. However, if the patient is an adult, please do ask for a consent informally from the patient. If the patient agrees to discuss his problem in front of the caregiver, go ahead with the telemedicine consultation. If the patient raises some kind of uh, reservation, please do ask for the caregiver to walk out and do the telemedicine consultation with the patient only. If the patient denies, please don't continue the telemedicine consultation. In the absence of the patient, if the caregiver has initiated the telemedicine consultation, please be very clear about this situation. These are very tricky situation. So, please do ask for authorization letter. Ask for the photo ID of the caregiver. Check for the relationship proof between the patient and the caregiver. And it should be a follow-up consult. Avoid first consult in the absence of the patient. This is very, very essential. Again, I will repeat. This is a very tricky situation. Let's repeat what to do in the absence of patient. Check for the authorization letter. Check for the photo ID of the caregiver. Ensure the relationship. If required, contact the patient over the phone and ask him whether he has given authorization letter. The phone number should be used during the registration. Whatever the registration phone number has been used, please call that phone number and ask for that. If in doubt, avoid the telemedicine consultation. Ask for in-person consultation. So to conclude, my dear friends, teletriage is very, very essential and beneficial for bedridden patients, geriatric patients, or a patients who have paraplegia or a neurological dysfunction. This plays a very important role. Please do use teletriage with your professional discretion. Emergency medical care, in-person consultation is must. For this teletriage, telefollow-up plays a very essential role and use this teletriage for telefollow-up consultation. Thank you for giving your valuable time. Stay safe.